Hello and good morning, you two. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm pretty good, thanks. Me as well. Good morning. Well, that's that's absolutely fantastic because it's always better to share a conversation when everybody's uh, you know feeling great. How are you doing today? Absolutely fantastic. What what a great opportunity for you to to continue to exercise your voice. And because we live in a society where it's you know I I remember my father would always say pipe down, pipe down. No, 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 no. They, nobody needs to know what you're thinking about. And we needed people like you, Gavin, to be able to step forward and say, hey, look. We need to talk about this, and we need to make some changes. Yeah, thank you. I'm definitely a big talker. I don't let things like that go uh, go undiscussed for sure. Now, Kyle, for you to be involved in in the project, I mean, there, there's there's, I mean, first of all, you know, Lennon and McCartney, uh, Keith Richards, and Mick Jagger, collaborations are a beautiful part of the everyday world. You have collaborated with Gavin here with something that is going to change the world in a really big way. Thank you. That's true. I often compare myself to Mick Jagger, so I appreciate you picking up on our similarities. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, putting pen to paper, using the illustrations, I mean, how, how did it all come together, guys? So the first, so, I mean, it came together when Gavin was born, um, but the book really started happening when I was working with some of my students at the elementary school that I was a librarian at, and they were really curious about both Gavin's story and also making the bathrooms at our school more accessible. And I thought that his story would be so perfect as a picture book biography. And I thought, man, someone should really get in touch with him and see if they could write one with him. And then I thought, wait, wait, I should do that. I am the right one for this job. <laughs> so I knew a couple of the people that he worked with at the ACLU who helped me get in touch with him. And from then, I just started working on it. I listened, you know, I interviewed him, I talked to him. We figured out together how we wanted the story to be framed. And it took five, it was, that was five years ago. Wow. And the book came out yesterday. Wow. Isn't that amazing how that journey, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, to take it from an idea to a, a, a physical published book? I mean, the, the average uh, reader does not understand that, that it, because too many quitters in the world. And you just told those writers, hey, look, it could take some time, but you can get the job done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was also very clear to Gavin that this might never happen, that I might not be able to pull it off. But I'm glad that I, that we both stuck with it and that he trusted me. You you, you spoke of the of the library. Um, the, you know you know how the world is these days. I mean, that more parents are trying to get books out of the library. I think this book needs to be in the library. I agree, and I hope that librarians and educators are already preparing what they'll do when this book ends up on those band lists. It, you know, if, if it doesn't end up in a library, you know kids are going to bring it to school. No matter what, it's going to be in class. I sure hope so. Well, well, but you, you say it right here. I mean, it's, it's very clear, the two of you, trans rights or human rights. You, you, you've got to have an, you know, an open discussion about that. <laughs> yes. The name of the book that we're talking about is If Your, if Your Kid Like Gavin, The True Story of a Young Trans Activist. There's a lot of people that are going to attach themselves to this, not just YA readers, but I'll bet you there's going to be a lot of adults that are going to be reading this book as well. Are you open for that inside your heart? Well, remember, this is a picture book, so the whole point of picture books is that adults will be reading these to children. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that, that's the whole, that's, but at the same time, you know, those of us whose kids have gone on to grow, grow, you know, like my, my daughter's 43. I mean, I, as an adult, I found, tr- and even with the people that I've shared the book with, as adults, we got into this book as well. That's great. I mean, picture books are an art form that don't have a limited audience to them. Now, when, what, one of the things that I think is missing from the world of art when it comes to picture books is that there are many times that these, these pictures that are in these books need to be up on walls. Ha, are, are you guys going to transfer into that, that type of thing? Because th- there are some really stunning shots in this. Well, that would be a great question for Jay Yang, the illustrator. He's mm-hmm. incredibly talented. I'm, I'm excited to see what he does next. Now, Gavin, it's a book of conversations starting. Um, it had to start with you first. Uh, you know, th- how, how do you get the conversation started when, when you're out in the public? Uh, sometimes it's just uh, by, by existing out in the public, either because I am uh, visibly trans with either my, like, pride merchandise or whatever. You know, I like to be visible in my community, or sometimes people recognize me, or sometimes I'm in public because I'm doing work around advocacy and that kind of thing. 
And really, um, the best way to get the conversation started is just by introducing myself and my experiences and kind of reminding um, the, the people I'm speaking with that there are people in the world who are trans and their stories and experiences with gender you know, look different from people who are not trans, and that typically gets the ball rolling pretty well. Doesn't this also open the door for, because I know that there's a, uh, uh, the, the world has changed so much that people don't openly discuss the, the trans generation, and what I mean by that is, is that, you you know, some people are shocked. It's like, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Nobody told me. Can, don't you think a book like this is going to open that door for people to say, hey, I want you to know that this is who I am? Yeah, I definitely hope so. I think for kids it can be scary and difficult to bring these conversations up, especially um, if they don't know that they're going to be supported. And if you have this book that is sort of this conversation starter that you can point to and you can say, look, this is, these are some of the experiences I'm having. I mean, for me, when I heard the word transgender, I knew it was me right away, so I can't help but think that if I had a book like this on myself as a much younger kid, it would have helped me connect with who I was, you know, so much earlier because um, – you know, I knew exactly who I was. I just didn't have the language for it. That's so true. That's so true. We even our, one of our greatest, greatest, dearest friends in our neighborhood. He speaks openly about how he always knew, and 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 Tommy has always just been brilliant in in making sure that that people you know uh, are, are all loved equally and respected equally. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful, and definitely what I have hopes for for this conversation around trans rights and people. It can't stay just in book form. There's got to be an activation such as social media. Are you going to create websites and stuff like that? Because people are going to be coming to you in secrecy. Well, I have a website, and yeah. I often get messages from people sharing about where they are in their journey. I'm often in touch with people all over the country and sometimes all over the world who are connecting it with my books in ways that they're not quite able to connect out in the rest of their lives. It is a journey, isn't it? Because I mean, but but it's a journey that sometimes, until recently, has gone unspoken. Well, I suppose that who's that depends on who who you're talking to. Exactly. I came out as trans 17 years ago, and I haven't shut up since. <laughs> were there any challenges in writing the story? Were Were there certain lines that you knew that you were going to cross? Uh, what do you mean by lines? Lines meaning that you know you that, that the average reader, the average reader is going to go. You know, they're they're going to pick it up. They're they're going to jump into the storyline, and and we're, you know it's it's like a movie or a television show. There there are certain things that end up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, I think that for me, hmm, how do I answer this? So, on some level, it was actually pretty easy for me because when I, like I said, when I wrote this book, I had already been an elementary school librarian for many years. Mm -hmm. where my number one job was helping kids find answers to their questions. So that was basically a second language to me. Um, I think the part that was trickiest, there were a couple parts that were tricky. One tricky part was figuring out how to acknowledge the like more complicated aspects, like the legal trial and the media, without getting into like, oh, you know, the Fourth Circuit Court, because I don't exactly know what that is, and I didn't want to explain that to a six-year-old. And then another tricky part was framing how to talk about Gavin's identity, because I know that Gavin didn't wake up and say, you know what, I've decided to be transgender. Right. But he did learn about who he was, and he did decide to talk about that. Right. So I wanted to make it clear that he did have choices involved in his identity, but being who he is was not a decision. But yeah, but you... the, the internal sense of self was not a decision, but what to do with that was a choice. You've got powerful words, choice. See, and, that, and that's what I want listeners to hear, choice, choice. That, that, that's such an amazing word, and, and Gavin brings his choices forward. Yeah, that's the, the primary frame of the book is the choices that all kids have, the choices that they don't get to make, and then what they do with that information. Gavin, can you imagine if you would not have made the choice to take this to the U.S. Supreme Court? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, for me it was it was um, framed as a choice, and it absolutely was. And as an adult, I can look back on that 15-year-old and see that, that he, in fact, did make um, intentional and courageous choices. But at the time, it didn't feel like much of a choice. I felt like, um, you know, I'm being discriminated against, and I'm not the type of person that's just going to let that happen without without a fight. And so, you know, the only avenue that I had left to me was was legal a legal recourse. And the ACLU got in contact and was full steam ahead. So, um, I, I can't even fathom what life would have been like if I had not 
been given the agency to make my own decisions about what I wanted to do and how I wanted to handle the situation and been given the ability to choose to speak out about my story and share my story with other people and, and, and you know, participate in that advocacy and activism. Um, and, and truly just my life would be would be so much more, so much less beautiful had I not done what I did. The name of the book is If You're a Kid Like Gavin, The True Story of a Young Trans Activist. And now here's one of the things that, that, I, that I studied and, and remember well about, about doing this is the fact that the subtitle of this is just as important and it should be lived out as well. Is, is there a question there? It's it's a statement, and the the statement is is that okay. it, it is so so important. So in reaction to that statement. Oh um, well, I think one thing that I mean, I I think I have a different perspective from Gavin because this isn't my life. Mm-hmm. But I often get accused of putting these identities on to children or inventing this concept that kids can be trans. And what feels so powerful about that to me is that this is, you know, this project had Gavin involved every step of the way. And that I didn't, you know, when Gavin decided, you know, when Gavin came out and when he made the choice to take his case before the Supreme Court, we didn't know each other. So I have, I had nothing to do with that. I'm just taking his story and putting it in front of a, of, of a larger audience. I love it. I love it. I love where you guys' as heart is. I love where you guys, you're, where you've placed your vision and everything like that. You have to come back to the show anytime in the future, guys. Uh, 15 minutes is not enough time with the two of you. Is it already been free to reach out? Excellent. Will you guys be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. Thank you.